Good morning from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I'm Ryan Alexander with Denison Yachting. And I'm Chris Collins. Today we're on board Odyssey, our newest listing based here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. This boat was actually built for the founder of Heeson Yachts, Franz Heeson. It was a parting gift to himself, if you will, when he sold the, sold the business back in 2008. Being that he was the owner, he added a couple more extra features to this than anybody else did in some of the other 47 meter series. It was really cool getting to see this boat underway, leaving the Palm Beach Boat Show up there. Things seemed to be a little bit less commercial. It was really smooth out there. Perfect scenario for seeing this boat. And then we sailed all the way down to Fort Lauderdale. You may recall that just a few months ago when we were at the Monaco Boat Show, we were showing one of your listings, Asia, which was a sister ship to this boat. There have been over a dozen, probably closer to 15, 16 of these boats made, and I've seen essentially two different layouts. This one is different because it has the private owner's deck. Correct, yeah. They got a terrace out back that can be separated, but it does double as a bridge deck aft, where if you want to grab a meal, you can, but that space is really all about the owner experiencing it. And then on Asia, they had the master all the way forward, which is now the cinema room on this. And, uh, and it's all on the same main deck. So you entertaining on the aft deck, you want to go forward, hang out inside. You don't want to deal with the weather. You don't even have to turn the cinema room on. You can just hang out there, play games and enjoy the area. The biggest benefit I would think to guests is having the theater room forward on the main deck. You can tell just by looking at the space, it has the available footprint that if you wanted to put a VIP in there, you could, but by leaving that space open, this is where the whole family can gather. It's a little cozy, a little dark, throw on a movie, great sound system in there. Another thing that lends itself to entertaining on this boat is the fact that there are four different spots where you can dine. Here on the main deck, you've got your alfresco dinette outside, formal dining interior, but you go up a level, you've got the bridge deck aft dining, and then the sun deck. Sun deck, yeah. You've got these windbreak doors that we added on after the fact, so if you're an anchor and the wind starts to blow a little bit hard, you can close them, you can channel the wind wherever you want and still enjoy the outside area and you've got great visibility from it there. They were spent some time down in the South Pacific, mainly Tahiti, they're big water sports people, so that was a great area for them to hang out in. But yeah, she can run on her own bottom from Tahiti back to, the, back to the US or pretty much anywhere in the world for that matter. So in terms of design engineering, they're, they're definitely perfected. Having built 14, they, they know what they're doing. Over the next 20 to 30 minutes, we're gonna be showing you every deck on board this boat, but we wanna start at the spot that really steals the show up here on the sun deck. You've got an area to dine, you've got a nice wet bar up here, there's a head up here as well, so you can hang out here the entire day if you want. You could take down these sunshades, hang out here in the sun, if not, put them back up again, have a nice shaded spot, but you have pretty much panoramic views, natural breeze blowing through, a lot of people enjoy the spot. So you can probably tell it's a little bit loud. We're at Pier 66, they are tearing down actively a hotel. <laughs> when you step under this hard top here, the noise cuts down, the wind cuts down. You see that they have this custom addition on the forward end here. Uh, they didn't extend the hard top, they simply just added this glass enclosure. The guests can go and use it air and entertain and we have separate engines for the crew. So from a service standpoint, all the service comes in there, they can plate, they can lay out here, they can serve there, they can remove themselves forward again. And then the guests have this entire area here to themselves. So really good. Again, I mentioned the day head. There's a day head in here. Ample storage up here as well inside this locker and then a full bar set up with ice maker. If you were to divide the sun deck into three, areas we've got there underneath the hard top aft into the deck but then you've also got your jacuzzi deck all the way forward here mosaic tiles nice hot tub yeah and here you can enjoy that breeze you've got some sunshade cover if not obviously it can be removed and then as an added bonus you've also got the little seating area forward so this bench seat faces over the bow pretty great perspective on a day where you don't have a lot of wind yeah i mean great place to enjoy a sunset cocktail or even watch the sun rise now that we've taken a look at the sun deck, we're going to head down a level as we move aft and take a look at the bridge deck aft, which doubles as a private owner's terrace. Ryan, we spoke about the uh, enclosed areas up top. Down here, we have something similar. Obviously, these bulwarks come back quite a bit to allow for the wind to transverse past them, like especially at anchor when you're swinging around. Additionally, they've added on these screens another way to help break down the sun, the wind, and sometimes the rain that tends to just beat off of that. Uh, Nice undercover space, great private dining area, if you will. It's right off the master stateroom. And you can also hang out on the app, very similar to up top. 
When it comes to how the crew services this area, uh, there's easy access to and from this deck over on the starboard side. We've got refrigeration and dry storage outboard to port, but the most impressive feature in the area is this single pane floor to ceiling uh, glass door. It's electrically powered, opens up, connects the owner's stateroom with this semi-private terrace. Correct, yeah. We've spoken so much about this master stateroom and now you get to see it. From an owner's standpoint, laying in bed, raising up the back and getting to see that view at anchor, breathtaking. When you look over here to the starboard side, you've got not only the windows that let you look out, but there's a desk and a vanity area right here. You can get ready. And in each cabin in true a perfect charter yacht form, you have one of these notebooks. This gives you the password to the Wi-Fi. This introduces you to the crew, all the things that make a luxury boat a luxury boat you can find in one of these. And if you were to head forward from here, you step inside of a really wide walk-in closet. And then just beyond that, you've got access to a stone finished, really creative ensuite with a separate stall with a head and bidet and a steam shower. Heading forward as we leave the master, we've got a little bit of extra space. And then we pass into a really unique owner's office. This is a study, multi-purpose spot, really quiet in here. Yeah, very quiet. You close these two doors. I mean, you're not gonna hear much on this. This table also ro rotates. So if somebody wanted to get in, have some breakfast, you could change it up for something more oblong. But yeah, really nice, very private area, as you said, and quiet. Passing through the owner's office, we next enter the upper deck foyer, connects a couple different areas. The first thing you have access to uh, is a stew's pantry over here with a bunch of extra storage. And there's also a set of stairs extra wide that leads down to the main deck over here inboard. There's an additional set of stairs over here that lead down to the galley more from a service standpoint so the crew can service the sun deck without going through the inside of the boat. They can come up here, head forward outside on the port side and uh, head up to the sun deck. Also to the starboard, we have the captain's cabin. Nice size cabin, good size bed as well. You could do it as a couple. He has a desk that he can work from and it has a main ensuite and obviously two windows for some natural light. As we leave the captain's cabin, we come straight into the bridge forward. Um, being adjacent to that really helps from a obviously safety and navigational standpoint. If the officer of the watch is on this deck and the captain's sleeping, you can really go and get him if a problem arises. Obviously, typical state of the art out of Houston, everything monitored up here from your fuel, water, gray tank, black tanks, you can check your lighting. You've got camera access to most of the decks up here. and. This is where you navigate from uh, during the day and at night. So say you had a boat full of people, whether it's you know the owner's family or charter guests, how do you keep track and make sure everybody's safe, they're having fun in the water, but you also can keep eyes on where service needs to be provided? Sure. I mean, one of the big things that yachts use quite a bit of is radio communications. We use two-way radio communications throughout the boat. So each department has a head and that head communicates to the captain at the end of the day. It's like pyramid effect. Um, so between cameras, your uh, intercom system and cell phones, obviously the stewardesses are maintaining the level of service on the inside and the outside for drinks, food and preparation for that kind of stuff gets uh, relayed back to the chef. Um, deck crew are outside watching the guests on the toys, making sure they're not doing something that could put themselves in danger, teaching them about some piece of new equipment that's on board. Um, the engineers obviously monitoring everything from most importantly your air conditioning system because of the tropics that we live in but also the engines making sure we're not dragging anchor hydraulic systems are working again this all gets relayed back to the captain and this is his uh, central command when it comes time to monitoring all the systems and guests that are on board we know that you do that from here but in the moments when you are like coming on and off the dock in the morning having access from walk around side decks that come up from the main deck to the foredeck up here, it really brings into perspective the size of the wheelhouse, the importance of its placement, and the fact that you can run the boat from wing stations. Correct, yeah. And ha having somebody in here, so if something did go wrong in the wing station, you can relate to them. So communication can happen back and forth because things do break and you've got to be able to have that plan be in place and make it or execute on it really quickly. We're sitting here on the forward deck, another usable guest area. You can leave the part of house on both sides or the guests can enter on the starboard side. It's got wing stations for the captain to control. 
just forward of the bridge you have a rescue tender. That rescue tender is literally the word rescue tender. So if there was ever a problem with the generators and they couldn't fire them up to get power to the davit, the davit can actually be run off battery power per Lloyd's classification. So you can still deploy the tender even Correct. if everything else has gone wrong. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got a seating area forward. Uh, U-shaped seating, it faces off the bow, teak table, and then a large sun pad. You could probably have seven, eight people out here comfortably sitting side by side. The foredeck on this boat features a split deck configuration. So you've got the rescue tender in the guest area raised up a level and then you step down here. Correct, yeah. And Daniel, this is a working deck. You've got obviously your anchors and your chains there, your chains bin access to them through here. And you've got a bosun's locker just after that where the crew can store paints, thinners, varnish, any extra pieces of rubber they would need, lines, fenders, etc., etc. So nice storage area and it's out of, the, out of the guest visibility area. Yep, even more storage that you find here in the gunnels. These are raised up so high because when you're out here and the wind is blowing 40, 50 knots and you're trying to get you know, your lines thrown to the dock, it helps to have the protection from the wind and the spray. The yeah. setup is perfect for that. Agreed. Now that we've taken a look at the foredeck, we're going to jump to the opposite end of the boat and take a look at the swim platform, the beach club, and on into the mechanical space. Often when you talk about the stern of a big super yacht like this, you hear the phrase Euro Transom. What that essentially means is that there are walkways, port and starboard, that give you access to the stern of the boat. Uh, this swim platform is in the down position now, but typically it serves as the name board and it closes in this entire garage space and it leaves you a walkway just wide enough for the crew to pass back and forth with some fenders. But really the experience back here is when the transom door is folded down and this spot becomes the beach club. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's another, another spot to hang out in. Obviously you fill it up with toys, there's not as many in here at the moment, but when it's full of toys, you open this up, put them all out there for everybody to use and enjoy. You can also put an extended uh, sunshade up here, similar to the one that we have on the aft deck there. So another undercover area if, uh, if you wanted. If you want to get out of the sun completely, you hang out in here and... Uh... And when it comes to how you get on and off this area, we talked about the stairwells, but a really cool feature are these fenders that they have on the back end of the swim platform. This lets you pull your tender right up next to it. You can tie off, get on and off the tender nice and safely. It then steps down into the beach club proper. Uh, uh, this serves as a kind of a dual purpose garage, so you can hang out in here, but really what this spot is about is about holding all of the toys that you could possibly use just a few feet forward. So everything in here has got to be able to get in and out really easily, and that's what this design is for. True, and it's a wet area as well, so you can rinse stuff off, bring it in here, it'll all drain down and then pump out overboard. So yeah, very user-friendly in both, uh, both ways. The further forward that you move here in the garage, you see that this becomes a technical space. This connects not only to the engineer's control room, which is on the port side, but you can pass directly forward into the engine room from here. Correct. The engineer can access on the port side through the fiddly, come down past his control room inside the engine room. Obviously, from a safety standpoint, it makes his life easier. When you step into the engine room on this boat, it falls right in line with its Northern European heritage. Uh, what makes a space like this special? Uh, special, I think, gaining access to everything from a serviceable, serviceability standpoint, that's really important, especially when you're in remote places. You, want, you don't want to have to be a contortionist getting into things. So that's one thing with the Northern European yards, they're really good at allowing you access to stuff. You've got your two main engines, Although outboard you can get on to both sides of them, you go to chill ponds in the center line, pretty, pretty important uh, piece of equipment. Your two generators over here, you've got to be self-sufficient. So just think of it at home, we take for granted you to turn the faucet on, the water comes out. Yeah, it does the same thing on here, but we actually have to make that water to sit in a holding tank to be able to pump out and go. So there's a, there's a series of components along the way and all those components need to be on board and serviceable. One of the noticeable features of this yard is she's full displacement, so she can pretty much go anywhere in the world. Um, obviously, we mentioned earlier she's been to Tahiti, 4,000 nautical bar range at a cruise speed of about 12 knots. She carries just under 17,000 gallons of fuel, so range is uh, something she's got for sure. Low RPM, high torque engines that uh, yeah, give you that great fuel, uh, fuel consumption, uh, zero speed stabilizers, so if you dropped anchor in a nice bay and the wind picked up, you can still stand stable and your food and drink are not going to fall over. Now that we've taken a look at the mechanical spaces on board, we're gonna jump up to the aft deck up here on the main deck. 
passing up the starboard staircase and take a look at another key entertaining area. When you compare the overall size and placement towards the stern, this deck might look similar to the bridge deck aft. Functionally, what's the difference between this level and the level above? I mean, I'd say that, yeah, you could use it as an eating area as well, but one of the, one of the other key features is that when you arrive by tender, this is the first area you come to. People come sit down here, take their shoes off. I'd say it's a gathering area. Also, when you dock side too, typically people come to the after the boat, and it's just a nice place to hang out as well. It's low down, you've obviously got the wind break, but you've got great visibility at a lower level. So sitting at anchor in some nice, good, clean blue water, it's like in the Bahamas, you can see the bottom from up here. So it's, I think it's, it's pretty versatile, a little bit more than just an eating area. It's a gathering area as well. And this space was designed with crew use in mind as well. For example, over here, uh, outboard of the dinette, there's a double wide area where you can put two fenders. I was able to walk all the way around the boat with all my camera gear while the fenders were inside of, of the gunnels. That says a lot about the ability to move around the boat. Yeah, I mean, that's testament to this shipyard and other shipyards that listening to crew and owners and how they've used their boats in the past and making things a little bit better functionality wise, but not taking away from the aesthetic appeal of the boat as well. On the forward end up here, we've got some cold storage off to the port side and then another set of electric double doors that open up and offer us access into the salon, which is where we're headed next. Beautiful salon at that. To add a little bit of clarity with talking about custom building a yacht, uh, you might think that it's moving a bunch of bulkheads around. That's not really what the process is when you're building a boat like this. Everything's kind of where it needs to be. They figured out all the weight, all the distribution. The main challenge for you is how do you fill it up with things that make it feel like home. Everything that you see on the interior here was specially cut for this boat. Yeah, I mean, Bamboo Roll, they, they designed this whole interior and so it was their idea that somebody had to put into place as you see it today. I mean, something like this uh, custom dining room table that has the leaf in it at the moment, it lifts up, folds straight down, you slide together, move two chairs out and you've got a little bit more of an intimate setting. Other things, instead of it being cut straight across or rounded, it's done at this angle. Now you could put two chairs here, but not just two, but comfortably the elbows aren't hitting each other. So a lot of thought and a lot of detail goes into not just building these boats, but putting them together and keeping all those kinds of things uh, yeah, into the functionality of it. And keeping in mind that since there's no sky lounge on this boat, the salon, there's extra emphasis on the amount of time that you're gonna spend in here. So the windows help a lot, all this overstuffed furniture. This is really a great spot. You can enjoy yourself in here and it really eliminates the need for having a sky lounge Agreed. as a separate Agreed. space. Everything you need right here. As Ryan's about to show you, on the port side, you have entrance to the galley service entrance where the stewardesses can have plates in their hands and press the button or to make door opens. A few points of note when it comes to service. When you step towards the galley on the port side, you have the side deck access door. This is access into the main deck foyer, which we're gonna circle back around to in a minute. Staircase that leads up. This winds up right behind the wheelhouse. And then passing forward brings us into the galley itself. There's a lot of refrigeration on board this boat. On the inboard side here, we've got freezers and refrigerators. And everything is kind of based around a centerline island right here. Everything you need to cook great meals is found forward with three side-by-side -side glass cooktops, a melee oven underneath. The large windows in here are great for visibility, and when it comes time to clean up, you stand right in front of those windows at a twin basin sink, a pair of dishwashers in here. Everything a chef or crew could need to provision and prepare meals for 12 guests staying on board. On the forward end of the galley, we've got a clear ice maker, and then this staircase leads down into the crew common area and where the crew calls home. When it comes to the crew accommodations, you first step into this area, which is where you've got on the starboard side, the crew mess just adjacent is the laundry center. And if you pass forward down a hallway, there are four crew cabins, each with a bunk configuration. All have ensuite, yeah. So pretty standard for this size vessel, not too cramped, comfortable. And obviously you've still got the, the captain's cabin up top just behind the pilot house. So based on the overall layout of the boat, you'll notice that the port side is for the crew, typically, and then the starboard side, as you make your way to the other side of the boat, this is owner and guest access into the main deck foyer. And when you step inside, two other points of note, one is that we have the day head on the forward side here. This is shared by all. And then by the staircase center line, you have access to the galley. 
The main deck foyer also leads us down this long companionway headed towards the bow where we next arrive on the starboard side. Yeah, this would be the cabin on the main deck, the sixth cabin if you wish. Twin cabin, really well appointed. They haven't skimped on size and it's got a really nice size uh, head and shower in it. Everything that you find in the bigger lower accommodations like a desk and the storage and the ensuite, this has all of that. It's a pretty versatile cabin and it's away from all the other guest, uh, guest areas. Leaving this cabin, the forwardmost stop here on the main deck is this awesome lounge. Yeah, here. I mean, it's huge. Full beam, nice big windows, allows the natural lights in. A lot of people have used it just to hang out and after a day on the water, it's on the main deck, so you just walk straight forward and enjoy it. One thing that you find in common in the guest cabins and even here in the lounge are these iPads, and these tie into the boat's entertainment system. Correct me if I'm wrong, but to my understanding, the Kaleidoscape system, it's a server. You load every movie, TV show, any media that you would wanna watch, listen to on board the boat, and any of the cabins have access to that. All 12, 14 guests wanna watch the same movie, they can, that's the, the uniqueness about that system, and obviously all in HD or 4K. Now that we've shown you this lounging and entertaining space, that means we've covered the main deck, all the decks above, the only spaces for us to check out are the lower guest accommodations. There are four of them and they are accessed by heading aft down this long companionway towards the spiral staircase where we next come to the lower guest accommodation landing. Before we show you the accommodations themselves, just wanna break down what we find down here. Like we said, four guest cabins, there are mirrored pairs. So aft are, are the VIPs. We're gonna come back to those in just a second and forward are the twin staterooms. What's unique about these cabins is that there's actually a Pullman berth on the inboard bulkhead. So not only does it give you an extra spot to sleep, it hides out of the way. And then you have all the other Hallmark designs that you've seen like the desk, entertainment system tied in with that Kaleidoscape. A pair of whole side windows as well as private ensuite head and showers. Yeah. And if you notice the, the detail, the design detail has followed through from up top down here as well. So. Nothing's been skimmed from the main deck down to the lower guest accommodations. It's all top of the range. The way that they combine these materials is interesting because on the roof, there are multiple different materials. On the walls, multiple materials, but even underfoot. Suede, wood, like you said, some stainless steel, metalwork, and yeah, all tied in really, really well. Multitude of things, but we leave that up to the designers to pull off uh, and the woodworkers to create. And then when we head aft, we step out of the twin accommodations and into the VIPs I was talking about earlier. These combine to take up the full beam of the boat. Again, high-end finishes in here, natural light coming in through the windows, desks, a little bit of extra cabinetry on the inboard bulkhead, really top of the line accommodations for any guest you'd have on board. Absolutely, yeah. He's in a perfected their running characteristics, their engineering and that kind of stuff. So as long as people don't want to change that, they can change everything else, colors, interior, that kind of stuff. But if you've proven that part of the boat there, there's no real point in changing it because you know that it works and there's been yachts in the Caribbean, in the Mediterranean, New England, up in Alaska, South Pacific that have done all this already. So if you can prove the test bed and you add in your flavor, I mean, it's, that's 90% of the problem already dealt with. And there's an extra layer of perfection built into this boat just because of who it was built for and the expectation. And he was boots on the ground, so he was out there in the shipyard pointing out things and he had learned from his many, many years of owning the shipyard, or many decades, should I say. So yeah, she's, a, she's an anomaly for sure. On behalf of the entire Denison team, myself, Chris, and Tom Conboy, thanks for joining us on today's walkthrough of Odyssey. I love walking through boats with you. I love Appreciate that it. you uh, shed an experienced insight into different spaces uh, and you show me what to look for in other boats that I enter. There are a lot of things that show up when you look at the footage on board this boat, but there are things that you can't notice. There are details that might slip through the cracks if you're just watching the video. Unless you come on board, give myself, Chris Collins, my partner Tom Conboy a call. I'm happy to take you around.